everyone. Greetings from National Skills Network and Drone Fluence. Uh, Drone Fluence is an initiative from National Skills Network uh, to create awareness and uh, inform people about the opportunities that are coming up in the drone and UAV sector in terms of training, skill development, and employment. And as you would have seen our website, Drone Fluence, and also in case you are receiving our newsletter called Drone to Earth, by now you would have seen that we have featured many organizations, institutions that are into training, manufacturing, or into drone services. So in the same context today, we are in conversation with Mr. Narayanan Ramanathan. And uh, Mr. Narayanan Ramanathan is the CEO of Daksha Anman Systems, which is based out of Chennai. And they are doing some interesting work in drones. So let's find out more from him. So welcome to this talk, sir. And uh, tell us more about uh, good morning, uh, Daksha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to all. Thanks, Madhuri. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to share our uh, experience and journey. Uh, Team Daksha was basically, the name was given by uh, none other than the uh, great Dr. Kalam. Uh, this was, uh, Team Daksha was formed in the year 2001. And uh, I'm happy to mention that uh, Team Daksha is the one of the first uh, team to start activities on unmanned aerial vehicle uh, drones. Okay. Uh, this was uh, driven by Dr. Kalam. Who mentioned in 2001 being a great visionary he said drone will be the future so he said uh, to the uh, aerospace team in mit which is madras institute of technology which is a part of an university he told his uh, student uh, professor central kumar that work on drones hmm. so that is where it all started and uh, the team was constantly working and after about eight to ten years of various r d activities uh, 2011 12, the first drone made by the institution was uh, flown by Dr. Kalam in the MIT campus in Chennai. Okay. And uh, today, that place is uh, named by him as uh, Dr. Kalam Advanced Research uh, uh, Center in the MIT campus. Mm -hmm. So, subsequent to this, uh, Team Daksha won uh, the DARPA award in the US military uh, from US military for in 2012-13 and then uh, we won the Australian medical challenge apart from various uh, applause uh, the team has got. Uh, nevertheless to say the team was uh, actively involved in uh, various uh, uh, disaster relief management such as uh, Haridwar uh, flight uh, support then we did for the Gaja cyclone in Chennai and also the uh, Maulivaka building collapse uh, the team was uh, supported uh, to the state uh, government uh, police department uh, where we could re rescue about seven to nine people under the debris life. So I think uh, so Team Daksha was a very prominent name and uh, driven by MIT, Madras Institute of Technology. In 2019, uh, the company was spun off with alumni's and with some external uh, investors to a minimum stake uh, for a project called uh, Meher Baba Swam Drone Competition, which was done by the Indian Air Force. Yeah. Since it was a competition, Air Force was very specific about a startup should uh, participate. So that's all uh, was the reason to make this as a company as Daksha and Man Systems Private Limited. So which which was spun off from Team Daksha, and uh, we continued our efforts in that. Uh, towards the thing, uh, we were the first company in India. Uh, to get a type certification for a hybrid IC engine based agricultural drone, which is which is runs on petrol. Uh, of course, we have got now certified for uh, a surveillance drone as well as an electric uh, agricultural drone as well. And uh, towards uh, skill development and uh, uh, the training uh, programs, we have. Uh, we are associated with Anano City for uh, doing the uh, running their RPTO, Remote Pilot Training Organization. Yeah. And uh, I'm proud to say we have uh, almost trained close to about 2,000 pilots till now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, thing Anano City has done. And they were the first university to get the medium uh, class uh, pilot training, you know, approval from DGCA. Okay. They were the first institution 
Hmm. In fact, uh, for, to get a training approval, organization approval from DGCA. Hmm. So when we were the first to uh, employ as a company, uh, one of the CSR activity which came from Indian Oil was to train uh, transgenders. So we had uh, two batch of transgenders trained and out of which uh, we acquired uh, six transgenders in our company as an employee, which was the first of its kind, of course, the pilots. Hmm. And a couple of them are yeah, as trainers, they are working now in uh, CSR campus on our behalf. Okay. So uh, this is the, on the RPTO pilot training, which is very, very important because as you know, the government drive is to, uh, by 2030, they want to have each village one drone, you know, which means uh, uh, you need that many pilots to fly plus a co-pilot. So it will create at least about uh, 1 million jobs towards that, you know, so yes. <laughs> you need that many pilots. It's not going to be uh, easy to train so many people. So various institutions have been given now approval by DGCA for pilot training and uh, we are also doing it uh, in Chennai and we are planning to expand this year to another three, four places. Okay, that's really interesting, sir. And to know about how yeah. the organization has evolved, it's giving us a complete picture uh, about okay. uh, achievements and congratulations. Uh, for all Thank the events. <laughs> and uh, one it's, uh, it's a team uh, effort. It's not uh, my alone achievement. It's a team effort. Yes. And uh, our strength is our team. And uh, I am proud to say that our members are there with us for last, you know, uh, 10 to 12 years we have been uh, in this industry. And everyone has stayed with us with all the confidence in the company saying that, okay, we will grow and we, we are uh, there to excel in our uh, area. That's really fantastic because I've also seen you all always address uh, your company as Team Daksha. That's what I have seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really interesting and quite inspiring. Yeah. Uh, now coming to the uh, application of drone, as you very rightly said, uh, you know there are this agriculture surveillance and few of the sectors are very prominent because there is a huge government push and support and advocacy. Now in this background. Uh, uh, how do we foresee the training part of it unfolding? Because you just mentioned about the RPTO. Uh, how do we expand this? Because there are a lot of uh, regulations and I think it is not easy to dilute those regulations because flying a drone has so many restrictions. Um, so how do you visualize this scenario to meet the number that uh, we should be meeting in terms of yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good question. Actually, being a new industry and, uh, of course, the regulations has to be there uh, imposed strictly because, you know, it's a, it's as the safety of the nation is the first and foremost priority when, when we use uh, drones. So that is the reason even DGCA wants an agricultural drone to be certified where there is, you know, not much of a camera or a surveillance and it doesn't fly beyond 5 meters height mm. and it doesn't go beyond 500 meters. But still, you know, because... It can be used the other way around. So it is very, very important and it's an excellent move uh, by the government to have a regulation in place because that's very important in the safety of the nation. And the second point is uh, we have been, uh, the government has uh, published out the U.S. rules 2021 in uh, September, which uh, sort of a big boost to the industry because it, it earlier there was not, you know, people are not aware of which is okay, which is not okay and things like that. Now at least there is a clear frame of uh, rules that this is what you have to do if you have to apply for a drone, commercial purpose, mm -hmm. if you are going for a defense. Defense, there is no problem because it's uh, for the uh, government sector. But commercially, if you have to sell a drone, you need a type certification, you know, above the nano. Of course, nano, nobody makes much in India. Mm -hmm. Other than uh, micro, small, everything, you need an approval. And, you know, it's, it's a good thing which is uh, being framed by the uh, authorities. Uh, regarding your question to the how to develop the training and things like that, I think uh, it is a high time uh, industry should look in uh, creating, you know, maybe some sort of uh, excellence centers in uh, various uh, institutions. Uh, like, you know, maybe right from, uh, we can look at right from the uh, technical training institute or a polytechnic college, you know, you, you know the resource can be from anywhere engineering yep. colleges, you can create an excellent center where we can have uh, some sort of uh, subsidies from the skill development uh, department. You can establish a, a drone excellence center. 
the companies can support them with the drones and you know maybe they can provide the required manuals and maybe put one instructor trained instructor to train the people in the college for their students training this could be a good model to move on now is the drone training uh, pilot training is uh, being pushed very high yeah i think the next model would be something like the uh, we are also working with various colleges uh, in chennai and around uh, in tamil nadu we are discussing with various other uh, state people also to create an excellence center yeah you know because th- that will drive people that will give people an opportunity to know more about drones and students being the future of the country you know the youngsters so they, they will have much more opportunity to develop their skill set this is develop uh, definitely a, a high skill area in terms of uh, you know execution of the product but it doesn't need a very high skill set for assembling the product so mm-hmm. you can even uh, train people with regular training uh, practices good practices i am from uh, basically from an automotive background in shelly so i worked with companies like tvs and toyota so these uh, models of training what i have learned from them i am trying to exhibit in my company hmm. so that helps us to frame the uh, practices good practices because assembly is an assembly whatever you do it's a, it's a process yeah so this is what i think uh, this will be one of the directions which we can uh, foresee and move towards to enhance the skilled uh, requirements and also the capabilities and availability of resources in the country yeah uh, you already mentioned about the technical training institutes i think itis in many uh, parts of the country are going to introduce the courses and some itis yeah. i think have already introduced the courses uh, in partnership with uh, few companies drone companies uh, that's a very positive trend as we can see yeah. i also <clears throat> got to know that uh, two or three uh, drone subjects are being introduced in the cbsc curriculum uh, at the school level yeah. uh, where you know they're going to get sensitized and introduced to drone technology uh, so uh, this is quite a very i mean it's a very promising kind of a step being taken